Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Nice to meet you, Annalia. Nice to meet you as well, Phil. Ah, look at that. We're all on at the same look time. At that. Can you guys hear me? Yep. No. We can. Yeah. Look at that. Excellent. Okay. Wow. Good evening, all. How are good we? Evening, good evening. Good evening. Good. I just poured myself a slide. Oh, there it is. Nice. <laughs> nice. Can Cider you guys hear me? Okay? Yeah, we can. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Okay. I the, the funny, the volume on this thing was completely off. And I'm like, I can't hear anything. Well, <laughs> maybe because the volume was off. No. Wow. <laughs> that's great. I don't want to say anything, but I heard that's what could happen. Just tossing it out there. I'm just trying to get my life organized here. Never mind your guys. Is... Okay. I like your background, Kenny. This is comic book central. It looks oh, like. it's just my little office. I'd show you the rest, but it's just like freaking gonk. There's hockey cards all over the place. It looks like a bomb hit. Like, seriously, it's like a kid's room. Yeah, it's like Are my you a big kid, Kenny. What's that? What's that, Jess? Are you a big kid? Um, because he's a big yeah, kid. I don't now. know if I ever really grew up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're young. Yeah. No, no, I don't know about that anymore. I definitely, definitely not the young side, but definitely haven't grown up much. But, but you're like, I think actually your office looks whatever yours, it's a dinner office, but it actually looks like, like most of the entrepreneurs we meet are like that, right? Like you kind of. Oh, I mean, I've got my turntable over there. Like, this, this, is what, this is what it is, yeah, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But That's what you like, got. Like, it's just like, shit, you can't walk in here. And then if anybody <laughs> walks in here, they don't know where to step. Like, if I can step on hockey cards, I'm going to snap, right? Because <laughs> that's cash money on the floor, right? Oh you can't God. just step anywhere. <laughs> and nobody can do anything. No cleaning up, because who knows what's in any box. Yeah. Or you might envelope or whatever the hell's in here. Throw something out or... I do that enough. I'm not, I don't need anybody else helping me out. But you can, you can, you can see why Emily and I get along. We have so right? much decent oh, artwork. Crazy. I haven't got my tongue mm. yet, but is, is I mean, you two a, are so organized. Look at your not so, on purpose. Is this a team thing? <laughs> or it's or not team. on purpose. But yeah, are you sure those are not team thing? colors? So mo most kind of our team colors, yeah, that's true. Because most team members, <laughs> that's you know, why you just, I work for Emily. It's cheaper to buy t shirts, right? You can buy matching t shirts or shoes. It's way, it's you way, can buy, way you can cheaper do all than artwork. You don't have like, to. You can, you can just don't have to exclude that. You can do all of it. Buy artwork and the t-shirts. Really? And sneakers <laughs> and whatever else you want to match. That's actually kind of funny that you guys do have very similar. No, it's really weird. Yeah, like, that's, that's. Well, I, I remember Jess just said that one of the first times um, that we did a meeting or something like that, I was um, burning sage and she's like, oh, this is where I'm meant to be. So. <laughs> totally i'm like i don't need to know anything else we're good i found my home <laughs> yeah oh my god that's amazing it's awesome that's amazing yeah. that's awesome oh man oh. um for the audience we have analia krebs uh analia analia Yes, I, yes. I mean, I have a work so nice. okay. analia analia i'm, I'm up for all of them and, uh, and, and we have Jessica Malik, Jessica Malik and yes. they're from, I'm going to just pull up the name because I'm the worst with names. We we're, they're right from now, Social or? Nature. Um, and uh, and we, we thought it'd be cool. So uh, you guys have just been doing so many cool things uh, that it, it just made a ton of sense to bring you back on. I think you're doing... Um, well, one back on for the third or fourth time and one on finally for the first time. <laughs> well yeah. persistence pays off right <laughs> yeah. gotta keep knocking you never know <laughs> well i i was listening to some of jess's podcasts with you all and i was yeah. i enjoyed listening to them so that's good i figured that's i'd thank be you. part of the conversation the next time yeah it's awesome it's awesome so we we love i mean we're, we're unscripted like that but i guess um we, we've had uh, Jessica on, uh, and Lee, we'd, we'd love to hear a little bit about you and um, and uh, how you, you're kind of like path to social nature. And then and then we'd love to just jam about what you guys are working on because yeah, some really cool stuff. Stuff. Right on. Um, sorry, I have one funny story. Can I just tell you this? Mm -hmm. Because the book that you guys put out, I, I, I think that I've never laughed so hard because we, we put out the book and then all the social media came out and everything, right? You guys put out the book 
and like you know we've, we've got a handful of quotes in there and um the funniest thing was we we do some work with uh richard pollock um, oh yeah calling labs yeah so richard sends a note to us going hey guys this super cool book came out you should read it right <laughs> and i remember looking at the, the email going like is he I now I can't teasing tell us or is it ass? like like is he rich being a maybe jerk? you should like, read it <laughs> like was he trying to so and then I remember I can't remember I, it's just some cheeky right like ah everybody sounds really smart but like we, we've got some quotes in there too and then he he was like you're such an ass. Like, if you guys were in a book, why didn't you say something? Actually, like, tell us, and everybody's mad at us for not saying. Like freshly you know. minted, like, like just, just put it out. Like, we, we didn't even have time, right? Like, but anyway, it was very funny. It was, uh... I don't know. Anyway, sorry. So that's my funny that's, story. I, uh, I love that story. And I mean, all the credit goes to Jess for, for writing that book. It is 50 pages of her wisdom and she brought in the right people like you guys to help cool, add though. color cool. into yeah, it. But cool. yeah, that is all chess. No, it was very cool. Oh, no, but I, I think you get the original credit for hiring smart people. Isn't that kind of- I think that's where she credit. <laughs> Start from the beginning. Yeah. That's where it goes. Yeah. 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 Well, the, so the journey to social nature is a bit of a winding one. I, it's not a straight line. Um, and- been an entrepreneur for just over a decade now. And so I don't quite know anything else <laughs> anymore <laughs> for better or for worse. Um, but the, the journey really started quite early. So I was in business school and uh, was quite inspired by companies that were taking a different approach to running their businesses, an approach that really focused on a mission of some kind, whether it was a social mission or an environmental mission, they were using business as a force for good. And I was really inspired by that in my early twenties. And so when I went to business school, I wanted to use business for good. And I didn't quite know how yet. I didn't, I honestly went to business school, not thinking I would become an entrepreneur. I just thought I wanted to learn more about business and then marry that with my passion for doing good and we'll figure it out along the way. And so through school, I, uh, I, I did take on a student run business and got a taste of what that would be like. Uh, and what I loved about it was creating something from nothing uh, you know, just having the creativity and the freedom to think about all the different aspects of building a business, whether it was the website or the brand or the pricing, the service offering, talking to customers, hiring other um, team members. You know, it was, it was, I was going to business school, but then I was running the student run business with about 30 student uh, contractors. And uh, we ended up winning a uh, uh, a national uh, entrepreneurship student run kind of business award and all the things. So that, that kind of got, got something going in me. Um, and from there, uh, I continued to research businesses that were doing good. And it started as an Excel spreadsheet of a list of company names like Nature's Path and Salt Spring Coffee and just, you know, locally. And then I started expanding it with a list across Canada and then into the US. And by the time I graduated, I thought, you know, more people need to know about these businesses. I I mean, I'm totally jazzed up by them. So I thought, how do I get the word out about this? And uh, created, created a website uh, with uh, my technical co-founder at the time. And that was the change.com. And the change.com was all about advancing the sustainability movement on a city by city basis across North America by telling the stories of these green businesses um, I've always been passionate about and had an interest in marketing and marketing communications. So uh, was was interested in telling their story. I remember interviewing the founders of hundreds of green businesses and asking them, how are you participating in the change? And the change was again, this you know symbol for the sustainability movement and, and the change that I wanted to see in the world. So that became kind of a, an online web directory for green businesses, local green businesses. Um, and 
my passion was definitely what led that business off the ground, not necessarily a super sound business model. So that was my, my first lesson uh, in the uh, in the school of the real school of business. <laughs> and, and I learned that, uh, you know, you needed a business model for it for it to grow. And so it was really, I mean, an obvious lesson, but because I was so driven by impact, I just kind of let my passion get ahead of me. And, um, and then also put the two and two together and saw that I couldn't scale impact without a good business model. So from there, uh, you know, I did what, what we were taught in business school, which was call up the customer and ask them what they what they would pay for. And so I, I asked them, you know, I have I have your green business directory up. You know, I'm I'm driving all these all these visitors to your site to your profile. Uh, but honestly, like, what would you pay for? And they said, send me send me customers through my doors. Um, you know, send me people that want to purchase my products and and send them to me. And these were vegan restaurants. These were eco-friendly clothing companies. These were natural body care stores. Um, these were, you know, local green businesses that I was profiling. And so that evolved quite naturally into my second business, Ethical Deal. And Ethical Deal was just about that. It was uh, literally the, the, the businesses that I had profiled on the change became the first three months of Ethical Deals where we featured an eco-friendly deal of the day at 50% off. So similar to the Groupon business model, um, media in fact called us the green Groupon. And, uh, and our purpose was to introduce people to the greener choices in their city at 50% off. And so we would profile that vegan restaurant, you know, buy, buy a gift certificate for $10, get $20 value. And we would sell out in 24 hours and we'd send that vegan restaurant hundreds if not thousands of new customers through their doors exactly really cool. what they asked uh and and so that business took off we hit the market at the right time i mean it was it, we listened to our customer and um and so in the first year of business we cleared a million dollars i totally bootstrapped it you know i was literally a kid out of school um and and started piecing together my team and really just learning on the fly uh and and you know making lots of mistakes along the way, of course, but also had that had that business model that was that was taking off and really um, a million dollars in your coming. pocket. Well, not well, yeah, so many no mistakes, right? Not so well, many mistakes. You know, <laughs> it does I mean. pay for a lot of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice number. Though. That's a, that's, no, that's a nice know. number. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice. Yeah, number. yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah it was, I mean, it was good. I mean, I was twenty six years old. I didn't have any funding in the business. It was funding itself. So. From there, we we continued to grow. Uh, we grew the team. We had we had sales and marketing team members in each city: Vancouver, Victoria, Calgary, Toronto. I remember living in Toronto for a couple months, getting the team together in Toronto. And it was a very local approach because it was really about mm -hmm. those restaurants, those mm -hmm. service providers, those eco-friendly clothing stores, mm -hmm. cafes, etc. Um, so that business grew over uh, four years. And um, we became the eco-friendly daily deal site. Uh, it's certainly in Canada and we expanded into the US as well on a national basis. And at that point I had a decision to make, was I gonna go local in the US and raise a ton of capital to do that? As you can imagine that, what that would take. Um, and, or was, or was I, you know, what else was I going to do with this mm -hmm. business? And, so I surveyed my community and I went back to those roots of just listen to your customer, listen to your users and ask them, what else can I do for you? How else can I help you live a healthier, greener lifestyle and introduce you to these amazing businesses that I continue to be so passionate about? And they said, introduce me to the greener choices in my home. And so I kind of went from the city, which was those restaurants, those spas, those clothing stores into the home, which introduced a completely new set of customers to me. It, was, it went from service providers to manufacturers, and, uh, and, but yet the community itself, the, the consumer stayed the same. Um, but in order to actually introduce people to the greener choices in their home, it wasn't so easy. Uh, I, I had picked up the phone to Nature's Path again, my, um, my, my tried and true uh, <laughs> local brand and, and said, Hey, can you offer 50% off for 24 hours using the ethical deal model? And they more, more or less 
you know, said, said no, uh, the retailers would <laughs> be yeah. very challenged by that. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and, you know, we, we can't offer those types of deals, um, you know, on an online website or, or really anywhere for that matter. Um, and so I was like, oh gosh, okay. I was really almost ready to hang up the phone. And then they said, but we can give it away for free. <laughs> it just took me a second because, you know, here I was thinking, what? You can give it away for free, but you can't do 50 percent off? But then they explained it to me. They said, yeah. well, free drives, obviously, you know, consumers into the store yeah. and retailers love free and yeah. free is the name of the game uh, in CPG marketing. And and so uh, that was really my first introduction to, to how marketing works in the consumer packaged goods world. And, but I, I mean, for the consumer, it was... It was even better, right? I mean, fit free is better than 50% off. It reduces all price barriers, which I knew was the number one barrier uh, to people making a greener choice and uh, the mainstream making a greener choice. And so I really uh, was keen to to move in that direction and, and answer that call from my community to, to introduce greener choices to them. So I knew I'd have to change the business model. My customer base had changed. Mm -hmm. uh, the brand itself would almost have to change. And so at that point, um, I decided to sell the business uh, to a US-based daily deal company and start the next phase of advancing the sustainability movement, which was to start social nature and introduce people to the better for you, healthy, sustainable choices in their home through a product sampling model. And of course, because I had moved from e-commerce to free from the consumer standpoint, uh, I needed to figure out a, a business model that worked for brands. And that's, uh, yeah, we can talk more about that. But that's, that's where I started thinking about how I could add more value on top of product sampling for consumer packaged goods brands. And now Social Nature is uh, six years in. Uh, we're going to be 40 people next year as a team. Awesome. We work with over 500 food and health manufacturers yeah. across North America, yeah. and we are recognized as being best in class for driving targeted trial at retail. So it's the 10 year overnight success story. <laughs> yeah, but you had a, you, your first four were still a pretty good run. You did, you did okay. Yeah. I remember meeting you. I don't remember what, at what stage of the, um, um, the sort of the second venture the, the green group on. Yeah. Um, and then we, I lost track of you, well, except for on LinkedIn to see what you were doing. So I didn't know you. So you did sell that, that, that sort of, has, how's that, has that done anything since, or is that pretty much? Yeah. The, I mean, the assets were absorbed by another company. And the company's called it. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. this new, so this new one started six years ago. Yeah. As the, the as the, sort of the give, not a giveaway, but you, you let people try things. So explain like, how, how do they, what, 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 what did they do and what do they do now? Like how, how does, how does this work? Yeah, sure. So for the consumer, um, which we almost have a million community members, um, and that's insane I too. Subscribe to Social Nature across that's awesome. North America. So thirty percent in uh, Canada, seventy percent in the U.S. That's awesome. Um, so most of them are moms, um, uh, and between twenty-five and forty-four years old. Often mm -hmm. that's such a common tipping point for people to start to really mm -hmm. look at, you know, what's in my grocery basket. Um, as I'm now not only feeding myself, but also <laughs> feeding my children and, and so forth. So um, they come to social nature to discover what's new um, that's better for them and their families. So that can be anything from food products to cleaning products to self, uh, you know, wellness products, supplements, beauty, you name it. And so they discover those products through social nature. And then we make it really, really easy to try those products by offering them for free uh, to, to the consumer. And in exchange for that free product, they we, we just ask them for some honest, good old fashioned feedback. <laughs> you know, tell us more about that. Tell us if it worked, how did you use it? Um, well, it's not a little feedback. It's actually 10 questions and a product review and rating. Oh, so there's actually quite a bit of feedback that, that they do give throughout the process, but we make it fun, we make it easy. We share all those um, insights back to the brand, of course. Yeah. And, uh, and then, you know, as they continue to participate in the site, new sampling opportunities open up for them. So they're kind of like a mini like food, health, beauty, super 
tiny influencer. Like these are not paid professional, big mm-hmm. influencers. These are everyday people. These are moms. Most of them are active on social media, of course. Um, so they end up sometimes sharing photos of the products with their friends on social, which helps the brands reach more people um, than traditional sampling methods. Um, and and yeah, they they just see us as part of their shopping trip now. It's it's coming to the site. You know what's new at my local Whole Foods. What's new? Um, uh, you know what what, what do I want to try? And then uh, what is quite unique about social nature in terms of how we do the sampling? We don't um, we we don't tend to ship products out direct to consumers. Um, we actually send them a free trial coupon that uh, is available to redeem at a local grocery store near them. And so this way we actually are sending so highly targeted consumers into store. right into the store mm. to discover the product on the shelf, which can sometimes be a bit of a hunt in itself, especially in- That's okay, stores. retailers like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's okay. Um, and then and then they you know pick up that full size product, which is also nice for the consumer um, to experience. You know, it's very different. A little sample that you get at the traditional in store right. down than actually cooking it, bringing it back to your home, feeding it to your children. Like that's an, a, a completely different brand experience, um, which tends to also lead to higher repeat purchases because now they know where to buy it. They've had a full size product. They've cooked with it. Um, and, and so that's why brands love social, social nature, because we drive them into the retailer. We give that full, full brand experience and they see those repeat purchase rates as well. You conquer things that quite honestly are hard, right? Like, like, so, you know, we, we talked to some pretty cool brands on the show and sometimes I was telling Kenny after one of them, I, I went out to look for the product. Um, and, you know, cause we talked to, you know, kind of emerging brands. Yeah, that are, I found you know, it. You did to, it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I went all sorts of places looking for it. Right. And so eventually like I'm, I'm, I'm a retail guy and I love it. Right. So I, I probably went to like a half dozen stores that were on the store locator to try and find it, couldn't find it. Right. And mm-hmm. that like it, it annoys me. Cause I, I understand, you know, why it may or may not be there. Right. But I feel like with a full size coupon, it's a motivator. Like if I had, you know, that in my hand, it would be, yeah. there's no way I'm not going to find this product. Right. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? like there's no way, like, yeah. like I'm going to be able to get this thing for free. And then I am interested in trying it because I am interested in either the gluten-free, the dairy-free, whatever the, you know, the, yeah. the value prop is. So, and then, so once I've done that, I, I know where to get it. Like I am going back, right. Like, you know, yeah, and, and we make it even, we, yeah. we, we try to even make it easier compelling. still, yeah. still by, by learning where are you regularly shop. So we ask you those questions when you sign up right. to social nature, right. we also know where you live so we yeah. can geo target and recommend and actually build a personalized store locator for you so that you're not hunting at six stores around the city, trying to find this product. We've got the distribution list from the client. Um, it's, you know, it's up to date. We create, you, you just scan the QR code on, with your yeah. phone and there's yeah. your little personalized, personalized store locator for you to find, you know, a store near you. So we do try to it's really make compelling. it as easy as possible for yeah, the consumer. It's really, really compelling. Um, but yeah, they're definitely, you know, they're, yeah, they've opted in, they want to try the product and it's at a grocery store near them. So we do see a uh, strong follow through on that front. And then, and then the brand gets the insights. Um, we've been, we, some of the brands will even ask in-store experience questions, which is, um, turning into some really useful insights. We've helped brands That's save them tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, just by understanding, you know, if products are not on the shelf in a certain region. Well, Phil's question would have been that, like, where is it? Right. How long did it take you to find it? Maybe. Yeah. Did it wasn't yep. where I assumed it would be as a consumer. That's right. right. Are you planning to go? So who's like mm-hmm. in terms of like, so I'll get to the CPG folks. So in terms of the retailers though, so I'm going to get a coupon. Let's say it's doesn't matter what it is. Like it's a bag of coffee and you're going to send me to the retailer that I, as the vendor would say, okay, I'm listed in these locations and all retailers are happy enough to take the coupon. Is it just like a normal coupon? What, like, how does it, how does it, how does yeah. it work? Yeah. It's a manufacturer's coupon, which it's pretty standard uh, to be accepted by most retailers. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the only exception that we've learned over the years is 
real like small mom and pop shops sometimes just can't afford to have that delay in in cash right um from accepting yeah. a full-size free trial yeah. coupon. it's a clearinghouse option a problem for them right obviously yeah yeah, yeah. but i mean uh, chains as small as choices um are are accepting manufacturer coupons and we've run campaigns there to obviously the, the larger changes chains as well so yeah the retail i mean the retailers love it we're sending them foot traffic new customers oh, what do they care still cost to them right that's, that's are you kidding that's like exactly what retailers love person with a coupon like yeah. searching wandering and no aisles, cost to me like i don't do anything product. i just have to open the door to what i was doing anyway it's like a retailer's, yeah, that's a retailer's dream, dream right like you know yeah. hide yeah. the product yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll keep looking for it it'll be fine interesting like, <laughs> yeah yeah, no, we've had we've actually had really good feedback from from buyers at retailers at retail, um, you know, about our about our programs for that for just that reason, especially around new listings and new product right. launches, right? I mean, who knows it's on the shelf? Mm. <laughs> well, we, we we tell our community it's on the shelf and they go hunting for it. So yeah. That's fantastic. That's, that's interesting. So how does how does a CPG person person find you then? Like yeah. what's the process for them? So I have a I have a bag of coffee or whatever it is, and I call mm somebody at social nature, like, what am I doing? How do I, how do I, how do I get in this gig and what's it going to cost me? And we call Jessica. She writes a book. <laughs> I was going to say our, our, <laughs> our marketing department uh, manages the, the front end of the, the very front end of the funnel attracts all those CPG. But yeah, I mean, J Jess, why don't you share how we get the word out about social nature? Yeah. I mean, like our mission, as we've talked about before, is to help consumers make the switch to better free products. Yeah. And so to do that, we must help the natural brands win in the marketplace and have sustainable growth. So we want to be everywhere and that's what we're trying to do. And we try to lead through like education, storytelling and helping people understand um, not just social nature's model, but actually best practices and go to market strategy, right? Like, especially for emerging brands as everybody on this call and I'm sure many of the listeners might be dealing with now, like it can be tough to, to move the units off the shelf for a new product launch or listings and, and it's a very big risk. So we try to um, help people understand ways that they can support um, demand generation and drive in-store velocity. And so an example of our education there is the ebook that we wrote around online to offline marketing. And you can find us, usually we were at lots of different industry events. So like we're partnered with Startup CPG based in the US and we like to provide content and education there. Um, we are with the CHFA, okay. members of the CHFA, proud supporters of the CHFA and have been for years. And uh, many other associations are the Naturally Network in the United States. And we also host our own webinars. So if you Maybe were to go to socialnature.com uh, forward slash marketing, yeah. <laughs> then you would find lots of cool content and case studies that you can read and you can understand the impact that, that social nature has. So it's really a lot of referral as well, to be honest. Right. Like, quite frankly, our biggest engine is our customers. Like, they're telling their, their peers because they're getting results. And it's beautiful to see like in our space that even though we might be, you know, competing, people do tend to be collaborative, even if they're in the same category. And so it's, it's cool to see how a lot of our customers refer us clients to. Yeah, I, I think it's a big deal. I mean, um, you know, when you like in those kind of like fortune 100 companies, they, they seriously compete, right. They do their own research, but mm -hmm. for everybody else, little guys hard, need to help right? each other. Like, it's, it's a category nothing. build, right? You got no you choice have data. I mean, you don't yeah, have nothing, anything. You kind of like, hmm. you can't do it on your own. <laughs> this package looks like, great. Like let's go need try to drag it. Right. A few so at least in. like, this is such a great way to be able to, you know, digest some actual information from shoppers and, and be, I think so. That's why I joined, like when I, yeah. when I met Analia and I looked at the business model actually three and a half years ago now, wow, <laughs> I was impressed with the, the qualitative data that is captured yeah. through the program because yeah. I've worked in natural CPG marketing and a variety of different roles since apparently 2004, right? And so one of the things I noticed that is not available in like POS data is the why behind the buy. So like, why are you interested yeah. in this product or right. why would you not buy it? 
And right. getting that type of data at scale is very difficult, number one, from your target audience, and number two, can be very expensive. So what's so attractive to me about the model and why I joined the company was this is really cost efficient, actually. We're using working dollars to help brands drive impact at retail and sales and get the feedback that they need to understand how can I grow this, this product line or what are, are the, the improvements I should make? And you can't get that from POS data. You can see who's number one, two, or three. And our intention is to help you figure out like, why would you be number three? Like, what is it in this region uh, that, that you could, right. you could improve with these consumers? So it's, it's really cool. Like I, I, I just, yeah. yeah no, I, I think, think it's, it's, it's amazing that really, you tap really into a, you tap into a live database. That's, that's yeah. really, because the problem has always been, like in old retail is you'd be thinking, yeah, okay, whatever. Like, what does it, what does it really tell me? Like for, from, uh, you know, on my side, when I was a buyer, I just read the number, you sold 10. Where? Mm-hmm. Well, I can tell you where, who? No clue. Why? Why? Uh, it was on the <laughs> shelf. There was a price. I mean, you make a lot of assumptions, but you really don't know. And then your vendors would come in and say, you know, I'll give you a bunch of stuff and you'd be thinking, yeah, you could be right. You might not. I don't know. I have no, I have no idea. I've got some anecdotal, but I don't read, I can't glean a lot out of POS outside of it's either selling and I'm making money or I'm not. And all the stuff in the middle, it really doesn't, you know, the transaction and the till tape doesn't give you that, that deed. So that is kind of cool. So go back to even the gain. So I'm a, I'm a, like if we had a lot of um, young company startups, cool mm-hmm. products last mm-hmm. week, we had the pepper sauce, they got some cool people mm-hmm. on. So mm-hmm. that's great. So they're sitting there thinking, wow, this sounds really cool. Shit, free product. Okay. What does that actually mean? Like, what's this gonna, like, can I go into a yeah. city? Do I have to go national? Can I go to a chain? Like, is it, can I go to a store? Like, how much is this going to cost me? Because I like the idea, but I'd be, I'd be freaking thinking, oh shit, man. Okay. Like thousand units cost the goods, five bucks. I'm in the whole five grand. What do I get out of this? Like, did anybody care? How about if they all hate it? I don't know. Whatever multiple of <laughs> issues are running <laughs> through my mind. Questions do I ask, right? Like, like what, I, exactly. You know, like, what, yeah, what, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. so they gave me on the phone. Yeah. One's selling me a mile a minute. The other's got a great story. What the hell am I going to do? I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to say yes. And I don't know what the hell I said yes to. Yeah, no, that's, that's fair. Um, so to, on the targeting front, we really, uh, that is where we shine. Uh, because we work with so many emerging brands and, and brands that are growing, right? And that kind of five to 10 million in annual sales mark where they're in maybe, you know, anywhere from a thousand to, right. you know, a mm-hmm. couple of 3000 stores. Um, we work with a lot of brands in that, in that size. And so they're not national. Uh, and so what they do is they give us their distribution list for the regions or retailers that they want to focus on. And we geotarget uh, within a certain radius around those stores. And, uh, and that's how we can support, you know, a campaign in Vancouver, BC, Canada, or a campaign at Choices Markets or a campaign at Loblaws. Or so we can get that granular so I can, can say, hey, listen, granular. I just want to do Choices on 16th. I don't want to make it into a big deal. That's one is what the neighborhood does. And, you, and we're okay with that. We, typically, we don't focus not on that light, not one that or tight. two stores. Yeah. It would be, but it could be a chain, you know, as small as choices, which right. I believe eleven stores, stores, ten stores, eleven whatever, stores yeah. exactly, um, because we have a, quite a high density of uh, right. community in Vancouver, BC, where we're headquartered. So that that works out. Um, in other regions, um, perhaps you know, a certain city in the U- United States, we might need more retailers than that. Right. So it is. There, there's definitely, you know, a process to Figuring once, once the customer is. tells us kind of what retailer right. and what region, we'll run a query against our community and, and and then kind of share, here's how many people we could activate if that was your target criteria. Do you want to expand it or do you want to just keep with that narrow focus? That's fine too. And then typically, depending on their goals, that's really where we recommend um, if we have a conversation around volume, right? right? So sometimes clients will come to us and say, I've got a new listing to support, right? And and we're going all in here. We need this right. to work out. Uh, so, you know, what would you recommend? How many? And then we have a conversation around. Well, what what does success mean to you when you have that review meeting? You know, six months from now, what are the velocity targets you're looking to hit? Other times, clients will come to us and they'll literally just be really focused on the feedback. They'll say, Hey, you know, I don't actually need 
tens of thousands of people going into these th these stores. I'm just looking for feedback on what does the Whole Food shopper think about my product, and so then it almost becomes more of an in market test. Right. And and the volume is more similar to say you know a focus group. So it's we are except except cooler. Yes. Yeah. It's 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 really yeah. it's a consultative approach. I mean, yeah. we we hire in senior people into our into our sales roles and. Um, they're coming mm. either from industry or from digital marketing backgrounds. Like they have a value add of some kind right. to add to the conversation. Um, and then depending on the client's goals, you know, we'll pair them with the right person and they'll have a pretty in-depth strategic conversation around Interesting. how do we help them grow? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, that's, I mean, no, it's pretty cool, you right? Know, how many times have we had that conversation, right? Like, uh, we've just gotten listed. Right. And then you kind of like break into a bit of a cold sweat because you're like, oh, shit, I hope somebody buys it. Right. Like, do we have what does actually even that mean? Like, I just got listed. Happening? Like, what yeah, did I yeah, get? You know what? Screw it. I'm going to go in and just buy yeah. some myself. Right. Like <laughs> just to get some movement. So but, I don't um, get discontinued. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they send their friends and family in, um, yeah, you know, hundred percent. Right. Like, like that's write a review and you look at the reviews and they're all the same last name. You think, yeah. okay, you don't need the, <laughs> the family's not in a good review people guys. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, yeah. and then and wow. I do like that as well because you really the the why is it's what's it's the missing difficult. part for the most it's part right it's right? hard because it's hard you, to find you, it you get cleanly. stuck in your own kind of brand right. route you you figure out what your vision is it all sounds good to you you just don't have any idea why <laughs> no, you don't <laughs> how come nobody buys it I don't understand like we sound yeah. great you know like um, well sometimes even the other side feels why do people buy it I mean you you'll you'll pick sure. up on reviews yeah. if people do it. But it'd be yeah. nice to get a quicker review. Um, and yeah. if you're asking 10 questions and some, you know, I've got a chance to actually yeah. pull some information yeah. and say, wow, okay, I, I really need to step it up here. And you know what, that seems to be okay. Maybe I can move some funds into this part of my world because this is obviously where people want me to improve or totally. whatever exactly. it is, right? And they might not be buying it because unfortunately they didn't know about it. Like they didn't mm -hmm. notice you on shelf. Maybe your you are 90,000 SKUs enough. in a store. What are you going to do? You didn't have good enough placement sure. and they didn't buy it because they didn't actually go and pick it up. Not, and not because it's a bad product. And so I think that's one of like the All biggest right. problems that social nature solves for these emerging brands that haven't got, you know, the big brand awareness and their communities built yet is like actually making sure people are going to go in and like pick, <laughs> pick up the product off the shelf. Right. Like, that's your best chance because now it's in the person's home. They're eating it. They're trying it. They're, right. they're using it. And so now if your product performs well, and we did our job in getting it in front of the right audience, which we're really good at, that's your best that's cool. possibility, right? So, and then if they don't like it, we're going to find out very quickly why not if there's a problem, right? So it's uh, kind of like an insurance plan for new listings in a way and scaling the company. And <laughs> it's another way to look at it. You're, we were, uh, um, yeah. I was, I was chatting with a, in a brand, a local brand uh, recently, and they did a small campaign with us. And one of the things they learned was, and it, it, so they're a beverage company, you know, there's only so much room on that package. And so we asked questions like, what are the, what, you know, which product attribute um, was most interesting to you as a consumer when you saw this product and, you know, rank, rank and order. And so with that, they actually changed their, their label on their oh, next uh, packaging. That's um, interesting. Yeah. To, to highlight, which was yeah. different than, you know, their own. Again, product. how do you get, you don't get that feedback off a of till tape. You don't get that no. feedback off of a report that you get from your retailer. It, it doesn't yeah. tell me that. Or, I can or see velocity. Money. Exactly. Or That's even great. You know, some people will survey their friends and family, which is a right. great starting point. But we're it's, giving you data on you know, 500 or 1,000 people, which right. is much more statistically significant. And we can get those people that are shoppers at the retailers that you are selling right. at. Right. And they're buying similar them. products or like products. They'll probably give you an idea of what it's like versus potentially other things. Yeah. So you've got 300,000 of these folks in Canada yeah. spread out across the country, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, evenly uh, population wise, proportionate wise. So obviously Vancouver would have more than Kelowna, but proportionately about the same. And would they be in, in Prince George and would they be in Lethbridge? Are they, or are they just major center? Like, what is it? It does, it does kind of follow the population patterns. Like Ontario's are our biggest yeah. followed by uh, BC and then right. Quebec and then right. uh, Alberta. Mm -hmm. 
and then and then the rest. Right. Wow. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, typically, I mean, urban and suburban. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it's very, depending on what retailers you're looking to activate. So for example, if, if you're a client of ours and you want to activate Walmart shoppers, well, Walmarts are typically in more suburban areas. So right. then we've been activating more um, people that live in those regions. Yeah. Choices, more urban. Right. So it really, we, we, we do build our community around the retailers that our clients activate most at. So we, we see our community really as mini shopper retail communities. So you want to activate the Whole Foods community? Great, we have X number of people there. You want to activate choices? We have X number of people there. So we really think, because our sampling's at retail, so we really think about our whole business from a pretty retail first point of view. Do you do you find, that I, it's a curiosity for me, because I'm starting to find, I, I'm finding this all over the place, right? Is the, the I'm, I'm going to use the marketing term, but I really don't mean it like that. Like uh, uh, the micro or the nano influencers. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm very, it's only like, it's so funny, right? I've been in marketing for a long time and I guess I've always been an influencer of sorts in all sorts of different things. Like I have three kids. So when we traveled a lot as, you know, families of five, it's difficult to find places to like accommodations, you know, all those sorts. Of, so I used to write reviews for TripAdvisor and things like that. And um, didn't think anything. I just thought I was being helpful, right? Mm -hmm. And, but you, mm -hmm. you, you find that you start to gather followings for these sort of things, right? And I was just explaining this to my kids because I love tech stuff. So every now and then I get um, companies that put out new headphones, um, you know, they kind of go, Hey dude, you've got lots of reviews, which mind, you know, so my daughter is wearing a pair that I reviewed that I really love. And she's like, so these guys just sent them to you for free and you, you had to write stuff on it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. But it, it's not that simple, <laughs> like it, but so I guess like along those lines, I'm, I'm curious, like how many, of your, like, cause you, you do a lot of nurturing with the community. I kind of follow, you know, some of, you know, how you nurture these, like, do you get kind of um, folks like this, like, like kind of these um, quite influential nano influencers, if you will, that, that are in your community. They're, they're in the mix. They're definitely in yeah. the mix. Um, it, we don't like to, promise around that because really our first and foremost yeah, yeah. targeting yeah. criteria is often around the retailer or around right. a specific region. So that's that's our first and most important, typically most important for our clients uh, qualifier. And then from there, we might look at category usage and things like that. So, that, so yeah. from a targeting funnel, we're not optimizing the campaign to have certain social reach included. I mean, it would just yeah. narrow down the funnel far too yeah. much. But, but as frankly, well. as a brand, I wouldn't but, expect that, right? Like if I'm, no. if I'm worried about my labeling or I'm worried about getting people into store or I, I want consumer, I, I don't know if I actually want a nano. I, I guess for me, it was more a curiosity because you, you guys mm -hmm. just do, you seem to really just nurture people who are passionate about, yeah. you know, this, this, this segment of the industry, right? Yeah, I think like what's neat about it is that we're inviting people in. So we're not yeah. like pushing these products at people. Yeah. We're inviting them in yeah. and they're choosing to learn about the brand story. They're choosing to opt in to try the product. They're choosing to take the time to go to the store to find it in store and write the reviews. And so there's a, a really nice engagement that's happening there. And so what we also do at the end of the campaigns is we invite them to sign up for the brand's mm -hmm. newsletters. So what we're actually facilitating is, you know, the matchmaking at the, the beginning, right. right? And also at the end, so that the brands can start to build these direct relationships with consumers. Again, they've opted in. And it's that nurturing that actually as a strategy is really important is building your own community as a brand. And what we found is that we've had really high opt-in rates, actually, like anywhere from 30 to 50% of our campaigns, people will opt into that brand's newsletter. And so that's a really high quality lead. If you can imagine that each touch point, and this is social nature's example, you can also think about how could I build this funnel my own? It's, there's some tips in the ebook on that <laughs> if you want to learn them. Um, and so there could be, they would have had like 13 or 15 different touch points across this. So they're ready and willing to be part of your brand story. In fact, 80% 
of people in our community said they would like to be part of a brand's ambassador program, a brand that they believe in. So like this point that you're making, Phil, about like, you know, people getting involved and sharing reviews and sharing like recommendations on things they specifically care about, I think is a really big opportunity for brands in the better for you space because typically that brand is solving a bigger problem for the consumer. It could be like a health issue, could be an allergen, could be that they're just really passionate about oceans, for example, and they want to buy like sustainably produced products. So there's a lot of opportunity for that influence to happen. And that is how you can, it's a really good opportunity for scaling. Um, Imagine you told 10 friends and 10 or 20% convert, like not a bad little organic growth cycle, right? One. Yeah. 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 We're, um, it's interesting. We did a campaign for a uh, larger brand in this case, So Delicious. Uh, and, you know, they're a big brand owned by Danone and they have their in-house photographers and paid influencers as part of their mix. But when they ran a campaign with us, um, the senior brand manager there comments and saying, I'm so delighted by these photos uh and, and you know they had such a large volume of photos um that that came with the campaign they ended up integrating a social sharing contest into the sampling campaign where they asked people to take a picture of them enjoying their their frozen desserts uh, and enter to win uh, a, a year of frozen desserts and uh, awesome. honestly ended up probably the prize itself was valued yeah. at just a couple hundred dollars. I mean, it's $5, $6 a yeah, pint, yeah. Yeah. Um, but to win a year of <laughs> uh, frozen desserts, I mean, who wouldn't want to get in on that, whip out their phone and take yeah. a picture of, uh, you know, their kid enjoying the treat or themselves enjoying the treat. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you know, one out of every 10 pictures, I would say was like professional quality. When I looked at the media gallery, I mean, they're not, paid professional influencers these professional but actually and real like real but they're real yeah. and the real content. not studio <laughs> real shit real like real stuff people. that i can say yeah. people not yeah. you know paid people like that it's like people yeah. people yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's oh, not the data yeah. itself because like you're getting to see how people use the product like we work with primal kitchen on a ton of their cool like sauce products right um a case study on their story will be coming out soon and there's so many different cool photos of like the recipes people are making with the product and it's like not only is this social influence but you're getting to see how people think about the product like what types of meals are they yeah, making that awesome. kind of thing right which is cool right so awesome. well, it's cool it's cool for the next product development exactly I, I get a feel for where i could be going right <laughs> yeah the cycle just keeps speeding no, itself it's, that's it's what's amazing. so fun about it it's just really really cool what kind of yeah. engagement do you get from your people so like do you do you do you find like I'm assuming that you, uh, your users are all relatively heavy users. I don't know what that would be defined as, but do they participate in like, um, like, do you find most people participate in two uh, events a month or two freebies, 50? Like, are they just animals and they take everything free that they can? Or is <laughs> Not it at all. like, how do they play this? Yeah. I mean, you can't play it. It's based, it's based on the client's targeting criteria. So, so really, um, you, 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 you create a profile, you tell yeah. us what you're interested in, and then much like a dating site, we'll let you know when there's a match. Okay. So uh, if there's no, yeah, you're not sending me everything. You're going to send me what I've told you. I like coffee. I like tea. I'm yeah. not getting diapers. Hmm. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and so sometimes it can depend on the region that you live in. So, um, certain, regions or, or even depending on the retailers you shop at right uh cer certain clients you know i mean whole foods is uh, one of our most popular I uh, surprised. Yeah. Yeah. in our space yeah. no surprise there. there yeah and so if you if you regularly shop at whole foods live near whole foods you're likely going to be invited to more sampling campaigns right. um than than some other regions or, right. or, or retailers so um, because the targeting criteria is more or less dictated by our clients, that does play a part in the matchmaking process. And so some people will get more than others from that perspective. Uh, but ultimately, you know, we're trying to, we, there's limited supplies, <laughs> much right. like the daily deal world, right? right? Uh, there, you know, there's, there is some, uh, FOMO. <laughs> and so when an email drops into your inbox from social nature, no, chop, we get chop. really good. You better move rates. it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's uh, good too, right? That's, I love that's, that. That's good. I think that I I'm that. totally yeah. good with that. Like, yeah, 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 whatever. You miss and miss. Tough. Yeah. 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 But, wow. uh, but yeah, it's, it's nowhere near 50 samples a month. Uh, 
I would say, you know, you're, you're lucky if you're getting one to two samples a month. So I think that's actually a, a, a positive. I um, think so too. This is, this is not, yeah. you know, this is, this is matchmaking. So yeah. um, we're, we're trying to find good matches for you. We hope you fall in love yeah. with the product. Yeah. <laughs> I could go on with that <laughs> analogy, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're here to introduce you to new things or full size products. You know, it's, people are excited when they get it They're Yeah. And people also have the time to give a review. I mean, just imagine you got too many products. You probably, the review engagement rates would also probably. Which is sort of what I was asking, like in a backhanded way, you're trying to figure out, okay, so, yeah. you know, if you're only going to, if, you know, if you're, if you're a heavy user and you're doing three to five, let's say um, trials a month, you're trying something because you're on that whole foods list and your product's broad, you're probably still a pretty good person to have. You're not, you're not, you know, you're not the, the coupon shopper that's got seven stacks of coupons and tri tripling, doubling up. It's not that. Like I'm actually getting somebody who probably gives a shit about the space they're in. I've got good odds of picking up potentially if they like it, an Instagram post, a Facebook post, friends will see it. Communities are tight. If I know Anna is out and I just watch what she eats pretty soon, you know, especially if I know you, I'm going to think, oh, just look at you doing an Instagram. If you try it, yeah, I'll try it. I don't even need the incentive. I just need to see yeah. if you're doing it, right? <laughs> well, because I saw you to a lot of friends. Sometimes not. I don't care what you got the freebie. If you said you liked it, like you took the time to post, and I know you, I might say, yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll give it a shot. What the hell do I care, right? Yeah. So I, I think yeah. it's pretty cool. I like the fact that it's sure. kind of in that limited. They're not. It's not a free for all. It's kind of a cool. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah that's good, man. That's, that's it's really funny because when people believe in products, like they're crazy. Like when I, when Vega first came out, like back in this yeah. is like 2004, right. It was super innovative and it solved a ton of problems for people like me at the time that were taking like 25 supplements a day. Yeah. <laughs> and when I saw there was this all in one nutritional shake with all these awesome proteins, I was like, are you kidding me? This is nuts. So this is before I worked there. I did not work right. there at the time. Okay. I bought the product. I was so excited about it. I told everyone about it. And I literally, and I'm not kidding you guys. I'm not kidding. In stores, when I would see somebody in front of the protein set, I would walk up to them and say, hey, have you tried Vega? I really think you should try this product because here's why. And they'd right. be like, oh, I haven't heard of that. What is it? And I would tell them, I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't work for the company, but I just need to let you know, this is a groundbreaking product. You have to try it. And I would actually do that in the aisles, really. I would to strangers because it was such a good product. I find that shocking. Yeah. Really. Seriously. Just, just knowing you, I, mean, I find that amazing. Nice, but you know, but really. It's but, so unlike you. Yeah. Well, okay. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> like, you go easy. That's exactly know, what I would when do. When people so believe in stuff, calm they down talk a minute. about Oh, you would do that too. Another shocker. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Crazy <laughs> shit happening tonight talk? on the podcast. Crazy <laughs> shit happening on the podcast. <laughs> I do the same. I butt into people's cars. Say, "What doing that there? Yeah. There, someone wanted to buy winter tires at Canadian Tire." And he goes, "Well, I don't think I need them." So, where are you going? Wow. I'm driving here. So, you need winter tires. <laughs> okay. said, you don't use that MNS shit, man. You go buy a winter tire. Well, you so don't put your family on the road man. like that. We're just yeah. talking about like products uh, on a on like, like it's a all nice the same snack product or something. You're product, like, you got no tires, man. Do you have the you right transmission? Like, let's go I, check I'd your be like, just, I'd be, You don't take that waste shit, man. You try this stuff. That's this is why you got to do it. Absolutely. Well, what the hell? That's what you're there for. If you like it, tell people. So funny. Yeah, it worked. I mean, they sold for half a billion, yeah. right? I mean, exactly. the product was also driving, you know, recommendations in addition oh, to fantastic. the engine that they built. Yeah. I think that's why this is pretty cool. Like, I think, I mean, yeah. the fact yeah. is, I'm, I'm just, I'm always a, a million people. Like, shit. That's a... Just getting started. That's a nice. That's a nice. That's a nice. That's a nice. That's a nice start. It's a, it's a good. It's a good number. It's a good. Jesus, that's good a good milestone. number, man. Uh, it's a good number. Yeah. That's a really good number. Wow. Where, where do you go from here? Like what? What's yeah, next? Exactly. Like, like, like what you're, happens you're now? Clearly doing some just killer stuff for brands, right? But like, where do you like? Will you? Um, is kind of food and, and like you know don't industry secret anything like so you you can't <laughs> you don't have to answer it you can yeah, answer we're it, just curious like we're, we're curious yeah. now too where like you, yeah where do you go from here well i mean so we are pretty focused on food and beverage but mm -hmm. there are there's there's multiple categories we are just getting started in um i mean jess and i were just uh talking the other day about aromatherapy um and nice. uh yeah i mean 79% of our community are pet owners. More pet owners. Huge category. Than, um, and kids. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, More today pet for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a yeah. crazy category. Like 
Like, so no. I've, I've had lots of like pet clients, right? Like brands yeah. and it just year over year, right? Like it just, you kids know, are and the expensive. sophistication pets level, are right? Nice. Like, so like it used it. to be like just a basic, yeah, like pets Jesus. used to be, you know, like they, they have a purpose, they're outside, you know, they're guard dogs or whatever. Now part of the family, you know, like we've, we've yeah. moved from like basic staples to, you dress them, you know, some right, of the clothing is nicer than kids, you know, we're, right? hey, listen, we're, we're starting to talk about behavioral products already, right? Like, exactly. you know, how do you enrich a dog's life? And I'm like, you know, we, yeah, we have this cool argument one. in the house, right? We, we have a dog and she sleeps on the main floor. She sleeps wherever she likes, right? Like she's got, you know, two sofas, blankets, you know, everything. And our only rule is that she doesn't sleep on the main floor or on the upstairs floor with us. And the children are beside themselves. They're like, she's mm. lonely. I'm like, uh, it's a stupid a rule, Phil. Life. Like she has like a thousand toys. She's got sofas. It's part of the house. Every, she should sleep stuff. anywhere she wants. Yeah, you know, she just can't sleep on the main floor. And they're like, <laughs> like my my daughter's distraught, right? She's like, I'm with that's your not right. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, so yeah, yeah no, yeah, pet very, is very much part of the family now. So that's a, that's yeah. a whole new yeah, category. It's a huge, huge, huge. Cleaning aids, yeah. like cleaning supplies that are yeah. clean are huge. Yeah, because nobody wants to toxins in the there. house. Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, COVID actually heightened that one too. So you know, wow. yeah, that's true. yeah. I mean, wow. if we can get you know over the next couple of years, if we can add tens of thousands of SKUs onto our our platform, that's I mean, that's that's where where we're where we're thinking of going, and then right. that would that would really also transform the experience into an even better discovery experience right, right? it's like so, a little tired already right. you mm -hmm. said tens of thousands of products and she was yeah. like that's hey, a lot of products i need a nap <laughs> <laughs> like i said we're just getting started um uh, there's there's i mean we it's interesting i mean i mean 11 years into entrepreneurship, six years into, into social nature, but you know, did you ever think it'd be like this though? Like, did you ever really sit down and think I'm going to have a million people, you know, participating in my little world and my space with all these cool brands? Like, did you ever really, I mean, you always hope for, I guess, a number, but She's gonna yeah, say yes. Yeah. Like, I mean, why, why would she say no to that question? Because I just, you know like, why? Because when I look like, at it, I'd be thinking, yes, well, course. what's the number? Like, so is there a cap? So is 10 million people realistic? <laughs> do you cap it at two? Like what, what happens? Like, where do you I go? I mean, we're not stopping until every single better for you product is featured on social nature. So <laughs> Fair enough. Then, yeah. I don't know how many, you know, like it's, I mean, we, we want to focus, we want to continue to build out, you know, we want to make sure North America is, we've got all the better for you products in North America, um, as that's where we're focused today. And then, and then afterwards, we go beyond that. I mean, it's, it's, if we want to help change consumer behavior, we want to help um, people discover something that's right for them, right. then we need the options. Uh, not everything is going to be right for every single person. There's, you know, there's so okay. many, and there's so many new products coming out on the market every year. For sure. For um, sure. Something like, well, according to spins, just over 4,000 new health and wellness products launching every year. Um, and so that's a lot, you know, right. So, so we can, we can continue to, um, uh, sorry, I think that was brands, not products. Uh, 4,000 health and wellness brands. That's even more frightening. Every year. See, that's even more frightening. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's even more products. It's lots yeah. more products. Yeah. So really tens of thousands of products is certainly within within um, our, our realm uh, of better for you. And uh, certainly <clears throat> it grows beyond that. Uh, uh, but we want people to have the choice and ultimately let them make the choice, let them give the review um, based on their own preferences, their own experience with the product, um, and then be able to um, share th those insights around what, what kombucha brand um, is, you know, leading, leading in terms of nutritional value or um, packaging or whatnot. Like if we have variety, yeah. then we can start to, develop our own awards and things like that, right? Consumer cool. ranked, top rated, yeah. uh, uh, you know, products that like are- a little social by. nature button right on the product saying supported by, pick by. Pick yeah, I mean, there's, there's there's really, you know, as we continue yeah, to build yeah. out the community and the number of products, there's That's more things idea. we can do. Opens um, a lot of books, eh? I <laughs> or helps a lot of books and help a lot, a lot of, of authors. I mean, seriously. 
There's, you know that's, what I would, I would love, and, and maybe it's not in a... your your wheelhouse or, or things you want to do, but um, you guys have enough data. Like, so, like, this whole, you know, the things that you're doing to help brands qualify what, what works and what doesn't work is amazing, right? But you, you also have a ton of data that, you now, I, I see it like you you can now start to structure things that like big, big companies used to do and then charge like a gazillion dollars for. So you think of like decision trees, like just okay. think of like when you like kombucha is a really great one, right? Like everybody sells 10,000 brands of like kombucha. Like you can't go into a retailer and not have, you know, but there's, there's a, there's, there's like, three or four local brands, there's a big brand, there's a national brand, there's, you know, ones that are shelf stable, ones that are not, like, you know, what flavors, like, I, I feel like you guys are, are one of the very few that might actually have enough data that says, here's how, like, a prospective customer, you know, like a, a consumer, when they go <clears throat> into the kombucha set, mm -hmm. here's what they potentially could do, right? Like, they look at, what do they look at first? Okay, well, they look at maybe they they decide national or local, and then they go, okay, well, I want to go local. Okay, so I I'm in local. Here are the eight flavors, or it's because it's it's got you know certain certain attributes in it. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, um, all yeah. those things that that um, you know, Fortune 500 companies pay like millions of you know, like P and G has their own trees that are designed so that they're no brand you. Know, <laughs> outside of a Procter brand could ever qualify to be on shelf, right? Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, but mm -hmm. you guys actually have some altruistic data that you, you might actually be able to say to a retailer, you know, Hey, you know what? Like you guys are, you guys are, um, merchandising, but you know, when do you choose between non GMO and, you know, like, um, I think keto. it's critical. You, Phil. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, cause those I things... think you could do it. That's it's, it's yeah. helping category manage. One of the things Phil and I were laughing, he was here a couple, like a month ago or whatever. And mm -hmm. we went out. Right. And I don't, I don't care. I don't, I, I, I don't need to know what the category is doing. I definitively know you do not need 12 feet of kombucha in a freezer <laughs> in any storm. I know the math. I know what it costs to run a freezer. I know the cost of the freezer. I know the yeah. electric, yeah. electric pole. I know SKUs. Yeah. I know categories. You can't make an argument for me and I don't need to see the data. Mm. What I would love mm -hmm. as, a, as a buyer is tell me why and how I can get away with a four foot. Mm. I don't need 12 feet of this shit. I need four. What for and how do they buy it? Tell me what they do because any, this is, Phil and I laugh. We go, especially in the natural channel. God bless him. I love, I love this channel, but my God, I don't know what a decision tree for a buyer is outside of I saw no, no, somebody, they pitched everything. something, anything. Let's I listen list everything. everything. Well, it doesn't matter. We just list yeah. 17,000 yeah, SKUs yeah. in one category. Yeah. I think, okay, I don't know how anybody shops that way, but I would have loved at one time. And at the, in 12, 15, 20 years ago, retailers don't pay for anything, hmm. right? So you come to retail with all those ideas and they look at you and say, well, yeah, but I'm not paying you. Who's, who's paying me for me yeah. to use your information? I ain't going to pay you for the information. You need to pay me. So I, I, I <laughs> no logic. I get it, but that's retail. Right. But yeah. I would love to have to have that. And if I knew that it was being, not a Johnson and Johnson or Proctor or one of those or Unilever telling me what they've done in their little studies, like I give a shit because tell me they're not going to be biased. I'd love to know what the consumers are telling me. I buy kombucha, like said Phil said this way. I like organic first, then it's flavored, then it's non-GMO, mm -hmm. then it's whether it's glass or not. And maybe mm -hmm. then I look at whether it's refrigerated or not. And all the things that we think are important aren't the important part. I would love to have known mm -hmm. that as a buyer. Even, Someone could have given me that yeah. insight. Well, I like Kenny and I were love part it. of a discussion where we talked about like simply what's more important, non-GMO or organic, right? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and the, and the answer is very right around the table. One was like, I don't know the difference, right? Mm -hmm. One was like, oh, well, non-GMO. The other one was organic. And then everybody else had like, do you know what I mean? Like, but, but you guys actually sit You actually the, could find like, out that it, of, it's like, maybe hey, neither you know what, in this like, category. It's not they that. Don't it's the flavor that mattered. It didn't matter if it was that. You know, right? like, I don't like know. There, there's some things in there. Like, so I don't know if you want to, I, I just, 
you know, for me, because I, we're more I retailers, really right? Cool, we come right? from like, that world and we bought. Yeah, I, I love that. I love and that. It's a different mentality. I yeah. would have you know loved I mean? help like, I could go to Nielsen manager. and pay. Oh, uh, what are you going to get from that? <laughs> a lot of money, <laughs> right? Like, and shit. I probably wouldn't really get that answer, right? But you guys actually, nat- I feel like you naturally collect. You're going to get some home of... scan data, this highly oh, directional. Yeah, that's yeah. not what am I going to do with it? Anyway, this is. I don't know if you're going there, but I think it's amazing. We also can get like a feel for like, incrementality which i've heard yeah. like from you like buyers like you what like i've heard that like you don't want to just stock another product that's just going to yeah. switch market share yeah and well, then well, your actual sales anything, aren't going to grow I didn't do anything yeah. what did i, right? what did like, I do Give me something that you tell yeah. me, hey, if they yeah. buy this, they buy these 600 things. Not yeah. I think they do, and I think they walk yeah. by the aisle in a room. Tell me that they're buying these other brands that mm-hmm. I don't have. And now I'm thinking, well, shit, mm-hmm. okay, so if I do this, I get them? Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. that's a better game to yeah, play. All of a sudden, it's, it's a decisions. fatal flaw, right? Like if you're a brand mm-hmm. and you go into a buyer and you go, yeah, we're, we're, we're the same as those guys that you chose, except you should have us and not them because yeah, they're so shitty. Why, like, why, why, so the why? buyer's like, wait, so... You're telling me I make bad choices, right? So, so you're I've telling me I'm an idiot. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. So this this and, meeting is and maybe well. maybe that brand right. has been with me a while, and I like them. And you just called them shitty. So like, what which you, in turn you called me doing, shitty, right? Like that's not going to really work uh, like, too well, right? It's now you're it's especially bad, right? highly but, egotistical. But now you have data problem. go. Hey, they, yeah, I like they, it. They got a good yeah. base, but uh, we could do something different for you, right? Like just trying to figure out how cheap retailers would actually pay for this or have a way to pay for that because they just don't like paying for things. I mean. Like as much as we wanted to do things as a buyer, you yeah. couldn't. I mean, you, you were stuck with, well, who's paying for it? You're thinking, well, fuck, maybe once in a while we should pay for something just for funsies. Mm-hmm. Just for the ones that may actually benefit from this information. Maybe but, we should buy But up. a five to $10 million brand, if if I could go, like imagine if I was five to 10 million and you're the buyer and I came in and I had data that said, listen, like we did this because we, we needed awareness. We needed to drive people oh, to the store. People are buying it. But somewhere in that data, we paid for a little bit more and we figured out that they're actually coming for non-GMO, right? So, we, you know, we have both things or we have keto, we have all the, you know, labels on it. But in fact, the first thing they do is they choose this, right? And now all of a sudden, your picture becomes 100% clear, right? Because you're like, I don't know, I threw all the shit on the shelf because I got, <laughs> I got every product with every no, label because I, awesome. I don't know. Right. But, but yeah. now like a, a brand shows up and goes, listen, we, as part of the study, we figured it out. Like everyone comes in for the non-GMO. Good to know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, anyway. Yeah, there was yeah. Uh, no, I, I love the, I love the, the perspective from, from the buyers and from, from your, for both of you really. Um, there was just today uh, we, we actually, I saw some data um, for one of our clients and it was so interesting to see that when they made a price change, um, so they, they basically offered their, one of the retailers they were working with more or less required a price change. And so they had the data, same product. How did, what was the purchase intent post-trial, post-sampling event at that retailer with the lower price point versus another retailer with the same price, mm-hmm. with the current price mm-hmm. point? And thousands of data points against each of these. And we ran multiple campaigns at different times of year and so forth. And there was a significant difference from a purchase intent uh, standpoint um, uh, around around the price points. Mm. So for them, that did actually give them the confidence because they really weren't sure um, to then roll that out, which, you know, is obviously a big, uh, gonna be a big deal for them. But those, those things, I mean, you just, You'd have to, it'd be really hard for you to make that decision that quickly without um, data like this. Uh, or we had uh, another client that that had a really unique um, package that they spent a lot of time um, investing in. But through the reviews, very quickly within the first couple hundred reviews, we noticed that the packaging was not working for the consumer. So they iterated. <laughs> Actually, on their next packaging run, they changed the packaging, which was huge, a huge oh, cost for them. But they saw it and they're like, we're not going to stock more shelves with this. It's not working. So let's pull back. Um, so anyways, I, I love when brands iterate uh, on the feedback and the data. And we also love when they use it in their retail buyer yeah. uh, decks. Um, Jess actually, uh, <laughs> again, created some awesome content uh, around how to use our insights, our consumer insights that you get from the sampling 
that you do with us in your in your retail pitch deck. So uh, we have uh, I think we we have we recorded that webinar and it's on yeah. our resource page. Yeah. On, uh, socialnature.com forward slash marketing. <laughs> Send us the link. We'll share those there. Ones. I, I have the link. I, I've yeah. been on it. It's, it's, yeah, I will include it in the podcast episode because they're, yeah. You know what, Phil, because it's cool stuff. Do like, you actually five years sleep? Ago. Like there's a lot of content here. Like yeah. there, there's a lot of like really cool crap. What I like here. about what you guys do is your content's actually useful. You yeah. got to remember Thank like, you. If, you know, I've been out of that gig for five years. And even up to five years ago, to find credible information that wasn't biased from literally five of the top countries on this planet, like, again, like, okay, really unbiased shit, right? Mm -hmm. You know, to get actual consumer insight from actual yeah. consumers, not home scan and other yeah, things yeah, yeah, that we just didn't have yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. we made, you know how we did, you know, I don't know how you figured out price. You put it out on the shelf, tried a few things, you lost a bunch of money. And sooner or later, you figured out the price. You watched the POS line. <laughs> Not necessarily the best way to do business, but that's what you had, right? Yeah. And you made a lot of decisions, you know, like I'm still, yeah. I'm still amazed five years after I leave that the propensity to buy 12 feet of refrigeration for one category is still mind bending to me. I, I don't understand the logic. You've got mm -hmm. data now. And if you can mm -hmm. tap into things like you guys are showing, you could crank on a four foot what a guy's doing in two twelves, huh. right? Like you could crank mm. because you'd be putting the right stuff in because this is how he or she buys this category. Like mm -hmm. this is what they do. Mm -hmm. I think it's amazing. I think it's, I, I would have. I, mean, I wish we had this stuff when we were buying. <laughs> we are. What, do you, what do you think of um uh where do you kind of do you, would would distributors find value in the data or do you think it's it's mostly the it's possible the buyers. It's possible. I think it's like everything. Distributors are a little tougher because again, mm -hmm. they probably want to go back to the brand and say, listen, guys, mm -hmm. unless my margins are 45, 50, I, I don't want, I'm not, I'm not going to do this. Like you guys want to squeeze me. Well, then you need to get the data, mm -hmm. but it's getting that little guy to understand that that five grand or whatever it's going to cost them might be the best spent money that they'll ever do. Because I like, I'm doing some arguments now, trying to do some arguments for buyers to show them listen, you carry four of the same fucking skew. Mm. It's a one skew category. Mm. If you moved it all to here, your penny profit would jump X, your ring would jump X and you'd impact, you know, everything would change in your world. You don't need to do what you're doing, but to get that through someone's yeah. head, sometimes it just doesn't work. Right. But who's going to pay for that? Distributors is probably the tough. You really need the brand to come up. Retailers, forget it, man. Don't bother. Retailers don't pay for nothing. <laughs> Like seriously, I, they might have even gotten worse since I've left. I don't even know. Like a distributor could fill. If they were really they, built into like the if, if you had a if you had a, uh, I think the only way it works in my brain is if they own a category. So if you've got a distributor that's kind of got a category, like a category captain up, sort of idea, possibly. Yeah, or not if, many if distributors just, at that point, well, though, right? No, no. I think it's more like if you just got a lot of brands. You know, like the, there are some distributed, like in cough cold, for example, right? That, yeah. you know, kind of have a lot of products in that. So you you might want that, like in that situation, yeah, they, they might be, right? Because they would want to be able to kind of get into that category and be able to shape it more than yeah. just getting- I can think of a know, few who might out there, but... because mm -hmm. their margin structure works. Mm -hmm. like yeah. I, to Phil's point, like I know others who carry four or 5,000 SKUs and would be the right yeah. choice. But yeah. their margin structure is not going to allow no. for it because they have yeah. they've built their model around moving boxes yeah, yeah, yeah. as opposed to selling. Yeah. And that's fine. That's a distribution model that works. And I have no issue with that. Yeah. And there's yeah. others that are saying, yes, we move boxes, but we actually don't mind going out and trying to educate a consumer and or a retailer mm -hmm. or whoever it is. Mm -hmm. Getting harder and fewer farther between because mm -hmm. as usual, you know, what's the thing that most retailers compress is price. Mm -hmm. And yeah. those distributors unfortunately become less relevant because. You know, I've noticed also that time. distributors are starting to have like their own scorecards as well, especially with emerging brands and like setting up their own do. like incubator programs to like sure. try to actually coach the brands to understand like For the sure. working capital they need to mm -hmm. scale and like vetting. So it might be interesting, like from a vetting perspective is like the data could be part of a scorecard. So the distributor is like working with brands who like get it a little bit of product market fit 
and it helps hedge the risk on spending time there because it's not a total risk, I guess, but it's also not that much fun if you have some stuff in your warehouse and it doesn't ship. I mean, that's an opportunity cost for you. I'd rather list brands that I think are going to sell too, right? So that might help with that. I don't know. That could be another way to think about it. It It could. It's not that it wouldn't. Mm -hmm. It could for sure. Yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. It's Maybe just a game a, that, that space is getting tougher. That's all. It's that's just this cool. chicken and egg thing because it's just hitting up so much. There's, as Annalie has said, there's like 4,000 new brands at least launching every year. And, and it does sound like, you know, there's still, there is limited shelf space. There is like a le- bit of constraints and maybe things are going to change in terms of the future mm-hmm. of retail marketing, but having a way to kind of support and validate early for everyone involved, <laughs> investors, the founders, the yeah. innovators, the whole ecosystem. Yeah, totally. Like totally. it's kind of like, you know, yeah, it on that, be, on that note, we, the consumers vote too, right? Go ahead. Yeah, it could be a partnership. Sorry. Like just yeah, partnership, with a yeah. distributor totally. that has an incubator program, right? Like, yeah. you know, when they run their scorecards, like, you know, we used to look at packaging and go, oh, you're not going out like that. Are you? <laughs> Yeah. Right. But but some of these guys actually have like thought out scorecards now, right? They kind of go, no, you, you fail here on branding, you fail on color, you know, you, you fail on like there's a handful of things. So there might be like with some of the bigger distributors that have lots of brands, like in the incubator program, maybe there's a partnership. Yeah. You know, that you can like, hey, you know what? If you send them this way, we can actually give them qual and quantitative, you know, on their packaging and then. Yeah, I, I know, know. That's, you know that's just it. That's yeah. just it. I mean, can do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think with I mean, and that to, to Jess's earlier point, that's where we're actually getting we're getting a lot of business coming to us through referral because it, it's it, you know the distributor might not want to pay for it, the retailer might not want to pay for it, but they still want the insights. So so there so we have I mean we're we have a lot of brokers and merchandising companies, for example, right now, um, sending us sending us business because it makes sense. They're their job is to get the products on the shelf. Yeah. Our job is to get the products into people's baskets <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and to do, you know, on and off shelves. Here we go. We're the complete solution. And, and then we also give them data to help right. get that new product on, on the next shelf that they're, they're trying to get the, you know, they're trying to expand the distribution right, yeah. for those brands. So that's where we're seeing a lot of synergies, natural synergies happen. And, you know, we, at social nature, we like to go where the flow is, you know, where the flow is. We're not, if there's a lot of resistance, then that's okay. There's enough opportunity over yep. here. Let's go here. So I think oh. Phil's idea is a good idea, Analia, though. I think you could partner. Like I, I, I know a lot of distributors and I, quite frankly, mm-hmm. 80% of them, I would tell you, don't bother. They're, they're box mm-hmm. pushers and nothing yeah. wrong with that. That's the model. It works. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then there's others that because they've built their business structurally differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You could probably do it because everybody would win. Your mm-hmm. vendor would win, you guys would win, they would win, and ultimately, obviously, the cons- the retailer and the consumer would win. I mean, there would really be no carnage. Like people would actually win. I'm open to it. If any distributors are listening, please contact yes. Social Nature. <laughs> <laughs> Very now, or, or do it this way: if you have brands that are coming to you and don't maybe haven't picked the distributor yet or unsure, then come back to the two of us. We can do it offline, obviously. Yeah, because there are people that. I mean, I, I do it all the time. So does Phil. I did it when I was buying. I would mm-hmm. look at people and say, listen, you can't do this, man. How far mm-hmm. are you? Well, we haven't got everything. Said, Stop. You're going to bankrupt yourself. You're going to lose your house. This is stupid. You need mm-hmm. to do this, this, and this because you, this yeah. is pointless, right? Yeah. Or yeah. go talk to Anna Lay or go talk to Jess and they'll walk you through this, this, and this, and then go talk to Phil and he'll do this, this, yeah. and this. Totally. Right? But that's yeah. not as common as it should be, but it is yeah. doable and people will help. But if you yeah. guys mm-hmm. have that, I don't mind. You can rifle them to us. We don't have to be involved. I don't, it's not for a cut. It'd be like, yeah. Hey, this is who you go talk to. Then we'll tell you, say, listen, we sent them there, follow up with them because now mm-hmm. you're closing the loop and you might actually be able to do some cool things. Totally. I mean, you get a lot of us brands that want to enter the Canadian market and they've seen success with social nature in the U S and so they're looking to replicate mm-hmm. that in Canada. And they always, they ask us for guidance. Like what, what should we do in Canada? Like what's stay the market home. like? Should stay we go national? States. Should we do this? Like who stay should we talk home. to? Stay you know? at home. We've got too many freaking language laws. We've got too many issues. Stay yeah, it's true. Yeah. Because so, oh, you're yeah. thinking you're going to do the math and say it's one tenth. It does not work. Yeah. yeah. So as true. long as you change that mentality, come up. <laughs> you got to be very careful in how you do it because, you know, seriously, they forget. We got two cities. We got two areas. We got the GTA sure. and we got the lower mainland. Then you mm-hmm. got shit in between. There's mm-hmm. not much going on. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
but it's a smaller market for sure. It's a different market, but it's, look, it's, it's a, a different great market. Yeah. We, totally. we love our products. We're very loyal to products. We, we stick by brands. Like we're probably even better than them that way. We just not a lot of us. It's fun because I've actually met international brands in the past that want to validate their products with a Canadian audience because our Canadians tend to be like a little bit more um, stringent in their criteria. Absolutely. There's, there is good education out there in the space, right? Like the CHV has done a great job. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like if it's good enough for a Canadian, then we know it's going to work. It'll work in most places. Yeah. (laughs) Saying it works in the States is going to work anywhere else is not the benchmark. It's probably the other way. If it works here, it could probably work most places. Exactly. Interesting. We're on. Yeah, cool stuff. Playing on both sides of the market, actually, because it just, I mean, the other way around, right? We work with Canadian brands that then want to launch into the U.S. Right. They don't have to change providers. They can, you know, just, so it is... Yeah. Very cool, guys. You guys are doing some neat things, like really, yeah. really cool things. Thank you for coming on. Really this cool has things. It's been amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank yeah, you. Fun. Thank you yeah. for inviting us. Uh, yeah. Now you got we're, us both um, thinking. We're going to put all your links in the uh, podcast show notes. Um, so we'll make sure, hopefully, we drive you a bunch of people who actually read the case studies because they're, they're quite good. Case studies uh, are so easy to read yeah. and they're worth it. I mean, it's, they're not hard reads. Just yeah. read the damn things. They're really yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, not because you're on, because I mean, I've read them. I mean, I, I, I if no, I was really behind great. the buying they desk really again, I'd still yeah. be reading them. I think they're well yeah. done. Yeah. I think they're Thanks, informative. Kenny. I think you guys do good work. I really do. I, it means a lot. Thank yeah. you. You guys do good stuff. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks yeah. for coming Thank on. That was you. awesome, guys. Thank you. Appreciate this it. This was really fun, too. I have to yeah. say, the space that you create with us is just, it's so fun. So Excellent. thank you for the great work that you're both doing Listen, and appreciate it. Thank bringing you. people oh, together. No. Yeah, no, you takes the guest, baby. It's, it's really fun. <laughs> it's really fun. But yeah, um, love it. you guys have a standing invitation. So as you see trends change, as you, if you want to tell something cool, on, you see something if cool, you, let's if you want, if there's something cool, just hit us up and we'll do it. Like, um, we just we love what you're doing. And um, yeah, we want you back whenever you want to come back. That's amazing. That's so great. Thank you. That, yeah. for you guys. That and uh, we always have new things to talk about. So I'm sure we'll be back. <laughs> We love, we love talking about details. So. We, we love it. We love it. Yeah, I'm all over it. It's all good. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thanks, all right, everybody. You guys Take have care. a great night. Good night. Good night. Okay. Bye. We'll chat Bye. soon. Phil, Bye. stick on. Can you Thanks on? again. Yeah. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, guys. Oh, cool. Oh, uh, they're so cool. You know what it is? I liked, I liked sort of toward the end where you were going with it because all the way through it, I'm thinking, you know, shit, I wish as a buyer, one, I wish as a buyer, I wish I was any buyer in retail because I know what it's like. It's very tough to get. It's tough to do the right thing sometimes because you're restricted yeah. on what, on how yeah. you would get the information. You know, you're always trying to find someone to pay for it. Yeah. Think, okay, like serious, this is something we should buy, right? It's not going to be massively expensive, but the data would be so good. Like this is like real consumer yeah. data. And, and, like, I, don't, and I don't stuff. need all the other, like I don't need the, like the problem with the, all the other studies, right? Is I don't need all the bullshit that comes with. Oh, that. come on! Like, and all the filtering probably, they like, do and the redactions yeah, and whatever. There's probably, but like in truth, there's probably like two nuggets out of a exactly. like fifty-page study that I really want. Exactly. Like, I I feel like with these guys, it it is that simple. It's like I I just need two things. Like if it's you could just answer for me whether they're coming for the non-gmo or they're coming for the natural that would help so give me the order right? that they're like, coming or, in for like yeah, and what's yeah, the relative yeah. All importance of those things, right like it's just, you could probably find that yeah. out because they'll ask yeah. how important is this not yeah. very well yeah. 50 not varies out of 50 people i hate to tell you guys it's yeah. a not very yeah <laughs> it is yeah. what it is yeah. you may not want to you know that's not the hill to die on yeah right yeah. but again you know by the time that you, when you were J&J and all that, by the time you guys got that to us, we're very skeptical and cynical people as buyers. And you'd be looking and thinking, yeah, okay, well, what else are you going to say? But, 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 and then like having been on both sides of that, right? Because I had J&J people come in to me going, oh, he's a sure thing. He's an ex-J&J guy. And now he's a retailer, right? And you're kind of going, no, guys, I know how the studies go. But then at the same time, you're going, these are the only guys who showed up with any number. Are the only right? guys who like, have to study, like, like any information. So, so where the fuck am I supposed to? Like, you can't. Let's you say, can't go anywhere. Let's say I don't believe you and I spy us. What the hell do I do now? I got You're nothing the only else, ones man. who brought anything, right? Exactly. So like, fuck, right? Like, I can't yeah. even counter it because nobody else brought yeah, me any yeah, data know, to counter, I right? I get it. Yeah. Anyway, it's pretty impressive. Like, I, I seriously, I mean, I would see if I would go back six years, I think I probably told Jess this when, when she came and talked to me in the coffee bar, mm-hmm. I thought, 
you know, Jess, I, I don't know how this is going to work. Like, I, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't get mm -hmm. this, even this model, right? Mm -hmm. At that point, because I said, you know what? I said, you're, you're trying to get retailers potentially to do shit. Retailers mm -hmm. don't do shit, mm -hmm. you know, and, but the more they keep focusing on these consumers and a million today and a million five next year and 2 million the year later, like you've got solid voice. Like you got a retailer, a, a vendor, a distributor, anybody who's got no choice but to listen to you. Yeah. Because you're carrying data that yeah, yeah. Is, yeah, could yeah. make a difference to my yeah. world. Yeah, it could right? make a difference. I, I think it's amazing. I think good for them. Yeah. I mean, I think it's I think it's awesome. Yeah. I wish um, we had this stuff when if, we were if buying. you're still listening to us, like we're we're oh, an hour and twenty six later. Jeez, we gotta go. Uh we we thank you so much for staying. You can tell we're pretty excited about this one. So <laughs> thank you. We actually like we picked up pace because like at uh, like at like an hour we start pulling on that thread and it just like you because know. you had to get to the point you had yeah, to understand yeah, yeah. it like and yeah, think, yeah. You're, then you're thinking you're yeah. thinking okay how yeah. does this and there was just so much more to talk about at oh, that exactly. point right it was like oh, no i like crap, that right? so, i think i think it's really cool yeah. I, hope they, I hope they crush it but they yeah. are crushing it I hope they, they crush are it crushing more. it yeah you think like it's cool huh between no, it's them cool. and and guys like bram and what they're doing oh my god and then you got field agent like you got all these things intertwine like Holy the shit, tools man. you have available to, to you as oh my god certainly yeah yeah. All we anyway. had, man, was vendors, big vendors, and Nielsen. That was it. Now yeah. look what you got. Yeah, it's incredible. It's, it's really awesome. cool. All awesome. right, dude. Yeah, okay, man. Have a good chat night. with you. I guess a early AM. Yeah, something like that. Something you can like that. Yeah, kill the recording. Bye, folks. <laughs>